Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Shepner, and this is my daughter Chloe and my son Emerson, and we're going to be reading Aaron Slater Illustrator, written by Andrea Beatty and illustrated by David Roberts. At the end of the garden, in the soft fading light, when the day turns to dusk and the dusk into night, the sweet scent of jasmine floats into the air to mix with the music of laughter and there. Aaron D. Slater soaks it all in with his flowery blanket tucked under his chin. Words drift like music, melodious, mild, a sweet summer song for a sweet summer child who drifts off to sleep as the cottonwoods sway at the end of the garden at the end of the day. It's summer, then summer, and summer once more, and soon Aaron D. is a youngster of four. The jasmine climbs higher, the roses have grown, and Aaron himself has a spot of his own. For seedlings and saplings beside the slate wall, walk, which he illustrates daily with a bucket of chalk. But what he loves most, what makes Aaron's heart sing, is to listen to books in the old garden swing. To write stories, he thinks, is the greatest of things. But first he must read, it's the best place to start, and young Aaron wants to with all of his heart. But the words are just squiggles, and try though he might. Even with help, Aaron can't get it right. Why can't I do it? Why is it so hard? He goes back to drawing on slate in his yard. It's school time at last, in his sunflower socks and poppy red jacket, and with matching lunch box. He marches to class with a teacher's bouquet, ready to read by the end of the day. But he doesn't that day, or that month, or that year. And though he makes progress, it's painfully clear. He'll never quite get it like all of his friends. Since he'll never stand out, he decides to blend in. And so here he is at the start of grade two in his simple white t-shirt and matching white shoes. He tries to keep up, to blend in, and to hide the tangle of feelings he carries inside. At first, it goes well, since his teacher is new and a bit overwhelmed by the hullabaloo. But things settle down and Miss Greer finds her stride, and once she gets rolling, there's no place to hide. Class, she says, here's an assignment for you. Write me a story. Write something true. And so Aaron does what young Aaron must do. He works on his story like the rest of grade two. He writes through the evening. He writes through the night. He writes and he writes till the dawn's early light. Then he drags off to school with his shoes filled with lead and his stomach in knots and a pain in his head. And he waits for his turn with his heart filled with dread. Miss Greer calls his name and Aaron D. stands and unfolds the sheet in his trembling hands. And he reads, well, he tries, but it's so hard to start with 33 eyes peering into his heart. So he stares at his shoes and his sunflower socks. Then he closes his eyes and then young Aaron talks. Once, well, once there was a flower. No, wait, I know. Once there was a magical flower which gave all who held it extraordinary power. And so begins the most perfect of tales of an imperfect hero whose courage fails. When the day turns to dusk and the dusk into night and the moon rises high and the dragons take flight. And who learns after all in the wee morning hours Strength comes from the heart and not magical flowers. That beauty and kindness and loving and art lend courage to all with a welcoming heart. And when the quest ends and the sweet flower dies, the students all gasp and Miss Lila Greer cries. The silence that follows rattles his heart. He tries to say something, but where could he start? He turns in a paper with no words at all, then blinks back a tear and escapes to the hall, where Miss Lila finds him by the slate-colored wall. Time stops for them both, the teacher and boy. His heart fills with anguish, and hers? Hers fills with joy. At the soul of this artist, courageous and true, she smiles and whispers, Aaron, thank you. When she leaves, Aaron stands there a very long while. Then slowly, so slowly, he begins to smile. And he feels like he does with those books in the swing as a new hope inside starts to make his heart sing. 
He knows he can do the greatest of things in a way that's his own, in a way that's just his. He can stand out and show the whole world who he is. Like the mightiest flames that banish the dark, hope grows in the soul from the tiniest spark. His art makes a difference. His art leads the way and helps him discover what he wants to say. And his reading gets better. Of course, it's still tough. But each day that they work is a little less rough. Like all imperfect heroes at the start of a quest, he must do what he can and hope for the best. Now in the hallway, a new garden grows with jasmine and poppies, a rambling rose, books, art and music, a dragon or two who soar through a sky of delphinium blue. The art tells a story, melodious, mild, furious, fragrant, wonderful, wild. It's all from the heart, and it's all of it's true. For Aaron, Miss Greer, and the kids of grade two. It's a place full of beauty for one and for all, the illustrator's garden at the end of the hall. Boys and girls, we hope you enjoyed the story tonight, and sweet dreams.